of a gambit by Fnatic to dare Yagao to playing Orianna. So Orianna's been a meta mid for pretty much the existence of League of Legends. And here in 686 games, he's played it 14 times. So it's really way down the list of his normal priority for mid lane. Yes, it is extremely strong right now. Yes, Yagao is a versatile player, but he was really known for that push and move, which is definitely not what Orianna is. So I understand why Fnatic would leave it up because if they can control a control mage versus control mage matchup with Humanoid and Yagao, or maybe even as they're hovering the Akali, get a side lane counter, that's what they're, they're hoping to get some type of edge on Yagao that way. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's no secret. Fnatics are a bit of an underdog coming into this one. You gotta, you gotta pull out some tricky stuff for the drafts. And I, I think that's a great point. Chat, we'll see if it does work out for them. If they do have a target pick to go up against this Orianna, they go with the Poppy and the Kai'Sa. The Rakan being hovered here has been a big pick here for Worlds. Also, Rumble yeah. still available. Still a lot of stuff on the board. I am yeah. a big fan of Humanoid Syndra. I know we've seen Syndra played into Orianna to not that much success by APA, but I think Humanoid Syndra is very strong. It's a tricky one. I think that BLG will probably not prioritize the Syndra very highly. If that's your plan, then you could definitely uh, hide it until later on in the draft. We'll see what they do end up picking up here. Support still open. The Alistair is still available. It's been such a pivotal pick here at Worlds. Tristana will get locked down here for Elk. So what we did see happen to BLG by JDG, they could be looking to do here. Again, dominate bottom side a little bit, get those pushes going, grab some extra plates. You've got so much power on the map with this Tristana pick. Works well with Rakan. And the Akali you mentioned, I mean, this is a bold choice. Humanoid yeah. feels like he can take Yagao down inside. So we saw Chovy find success with this against Faker in that matchup earlier this week. Yeah. But it's a tough one to pull off. In the early game, you're really going to suffer. Yeah, you can see uh, Kali starting to pick up a little bit of momentum as a mid lane pick, as a counter to Orianna, really, unless you're Chovy, and then you can just pick it blind. But <laughs> Fnatic, I think, I'm I'm there for the gambits they're playing in this draft phase. Giving Orianna, which maybe makes Yagao a little bit less on his comfort, and then giving Humanoid a counter pick. I'm there for it. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see where this draft does go. The Lee Sin going to be banned off the board. What will the focus look like in the top lane? You have to imagine potentially some more bands going in that direction. But with us, Kernan and Bin up there, as we do have the rumble for the next ban. Yeah, Cassante probably going to get a look as well here. Poppy can be flex top. I don't think that is how Fnatic are going to use that for this draft, and I don't think BLG are going to be um, thinking about that too intently either. Jin will lose now the Vi. There's a lot of power between Vi and Orianna, and you have big explosive follow-up with that Tristana. It will be actually not the Alistair, but the Nautilus that is taken away. Can be quite strong into Tristana, can be quite strong into Rakan. Similarly, if you had that Leona pick, if you did want to commit to that, you could try to lock down these targets with Solar Flare. But I like the Alistair here much more. Yeah. I, I completely agree, especially because we're unlikely to see a Silas, so the Alistair is fairly safe to pick. Also, if they've been scrimming any of the LCK teams, it definitely feels like the LCK has Alistair as the tier one of one support. So good pick there for Trimby. Unless you're talking to Delight, of course, um, which, in which case they keep giving him that Rakan every time. <laughs> as Jax, looks like it's going to be the lock-in here for Bin, and they'll take the Sejuani with this. Tons of permafrost Ooh. synergy in this comp. And you're doing this blind, quote unquote, but you feel pretty good into any available matchup. Even if they lock in the Cassante here, you know you have power. Yep. It's been Jax. It's, uh, it's a terror. So we'll see what they end up uh, in. I mean, Poppy Top into Jax, if that's yeah. been their plan the whole time. You can see the smiles from BLG. They're like, are they really going <laughs> to Ivern us? Yeah, yeah there it is. Gonna do it. It's locked in. They're going to play it, and they're going to play it up against BLG, gonna give it a try, and definitely uh, you can play this Ivern. I, I think it's going to be pretty interesting with the 180 carry that is the uh, Kai'Sa of sorts. You know, we only really saw it in the LCK when you are playing double 80 carry, you got that Tristana mid and stuff like that, but certainly can try to be very disruptive and, you know, put up some bushes, try to support some of your lanes as well, that Akali will need some help. 
I, I'm not a big fan of this pick. I'm, I'm going to be the, the one doubter because, like you mentioned, there's no double AD carry. Kai's not a traditional AD carry in any sense. And sure, you can put the trigger seed onto a Kali, add some additional damage there, give her some additional backline access, mm. you could argue. And maybe you can catch a root on one of these engaging champions. But you are always going to be outmaneuvered by Jax. You're going to have to deal with this Tristana leaping over. Rakan can flank you. You're a squishy champion. Sure, you have the Poppy as a frontline here. But I think this is an extremely risky decision that may accelerate the pace of the game for BLG quite significantly. We get to some of those mid-game fights. I think it can work, but I don't think this, for me, is the place for it. That, th those are actually some really good points because on one side, hey, let's just throw Poppy Top, let's play Ivern because we want to be different than what BLG is used to playing against and that's going to give us the best chances. But in terms of inherent Ivern synergies, I'd say Alistair is definitely there to make the easy engage to just melee range your Q, but not having like a melee carry or double AD carry does limit the strengths of the pick. I completely agree. Yeah, well, we'll see if this bit of a dice roll works out for them. Definitely an interesting pick moving into this 1v1 between BLG and Fnatic as we hop onto the Rift. So we do have some Jaws here. A lot of Chinese fans coming down to the arena this evening. Saw a lot of them waiting in line to get into the, the studio today. and. A lot of them very excited to cheer for our Chinese representatives here, BLG being one of them, and Nikau. Yeah, a bit of action here, but uh, important guys, reminder, you should log in with the Riot account and watch on lolesports.com to earn exclusive drops like emotes and icons. So make sure you do that right now so you don't forget, and you can continue to watch on there. Every one of these LPL seeds at the World Championship have started pretty strong on the first day every LPL team won then obviously BLG did drop the game to JDG but they're not all the same they have kind of their distinct identities and for BLG they like to fight a lot and I know that doesn't sound say. distinct for an LPL team <laughs> but they are the most distinct in terms of how much they want to fight they're over one combined kills per minute during the summer split, which led the LPL. So just look for a lot of skirmishing early and often in a typical BLG game. We'll see if that's the same against Fnatic here because their scaling, BLG scaling, is actually ridiculously strong. So if they're going the conservative route, they'll just stick to pretty even lanes and not try and push the tempo. But if they get a little bit confident, they're not going to hesitate to fight. I think to contextualize that a little bit, if you compare them to JDG, JDG like to fight in the late game. I mean, they will find opportunities. They will play around top side, yeah, exactly. but they play through Ruler. They peel for Ruler. He's their hyper carry. They like to play around that. BLG will find opportunities and engages all game long. They like to look for picks, and this composition absolutely allows it. We've talked about the Orianna into Akali early game. It's really in side lanes later on where the Akali is going to start to be a big threat, but obviously in this early part of the laning phase, these first few levels, you're not going to have any prio whatsoever. Yeah, at least Humanoid, he is taking a bunch of damage, but he gets all of those minions under the turret. Going to be important not to fall too far behind. Meanwhile, big wave pushing down on the bottom side. As Elk and On were able to get an early lead against this level one Alistair, which is normally the way it does yep. go. Pretty normal. I also like the classic Tristana pick into Kai'Sa. Usually you can't play Tristana AD carry into the Aphelios or the Jinx types matchups, but against Kai'Sa, it's a pretty good thing to split the lane with. Yeah, and grabbing early plates like this is exactly what she's designed to do against early Alistair. Has been playing with fire up here. Razork is here. Just get him. Yeah, I mean, they're just going to try to run. No, it's a big wave. And I suppose the timing not really working out. And as you mentioned, Wolf, that ward is going to help Bin understand that it's probably a good time to back away from the lane. Yeah, we'll get away. No harm, no foul. Razak will be able to take that top scuttle. Shun will do the same here bottom side with that Tristana priority. Avoiding trying to fight for scuttle. I think absolutely the game plan here for Fnatic with that Oriana prio that we've talked so much about. Yeah, completely agree. Pretty standard early game. It will be a little tricky for Fnatic to make something happen just because BLG looked to have three pushing lanes. The Tristana with the explosive shot, very good at shoving. The Orianna with the range advantage, very good at shoving. Bin with Bin, very good at shoving. So I feel like BLG in general 
is going to have three winning lanes. Ooh, very nice buffer there from Elk, and they're going to turn that one around. Trimby just trying to get some semblance of control of this lane, and they have the Ivern Razark is here. So maybe looking for the follow-up as they do go in onto Elk, and now That's he doesn't to hop away. He is just isolated first blood, given over to Noah in the bottom lane. Super well played here from Trimby with the flash engage there. Gets the knockup. Elk buffers the first, but is going to stick around here. And they have that gank, obviously, as you mentioned, coming from Razork. And that full sense of security Elk had, and he's not feeling it anymore. Down a heel as well off of the exchange. And that is really going to put an end to this early game control here from Elk. Yeah, and that's really huge because the way BLG like to play, as there's a gank for Yagao as well, he's low on mana, nice shot. Yeah, he's going very aggressive onto the turret, and they're looking to punish Yagao now. As, has he gone too far, oh, or is he just going to 1v2? The flash in, and the, the shield comes in, and Humanoid is safe for now. <laughs> and they will pick up the kill. Humanoid gets his revenge in the mid lane. And that is why you play Ivern. They did not anticipate the shield. Yagao thought he could get the outplay. The shields just kept on coming in, and it's now two kills early yeah. for Fnatic. I mean, in moments like this, I don't think it has to be an Ivern, but I think that's the mis miscalculation, as you mentioned, right? Yagao and yeah. Jun now down flashes. Doesn't get the ramp up on the auto attacks there that he needed to secure the kill. The shield comes through, and Yagao hopes that Jun will bail him out, but he fails and wastes his flash for it. And this is two great plays from Razork on this pick. I was kind of doubting. I'm a believer now. And we really need to watch how the bot lane is going to go for Fnatic because Noah has the one kill advantage. And one of the other identifying things about BLG is on loves to leave and roam. But if you have a losing bottom lane, if you don't win the lane first, it becomes very difficult to roam without completely abandoning your AD carry. So just a really clean lane gank there. Trinby finds the engage. And then here, Yagao low on mana, pushed too far up. Probably no way out. But once the fight gets this close and Humanoid's back, you could just flash backwards over the wall, probably alive. He flashes forwards, that's when the shield comes through, and it turns the tide. And the brush, of course, prevents him from ramping that additional auto that might have been enough damage so close there, but it's the Ivern kit that wins out. It absolutely does. I think that BLG, you know, you, you, they love to fight. They're extremely confident. I would expect that they weren't expecting uh, Fnatic to fight them this early and this often, but it is going all in favor of Fnatic so far. Now, it is just a couple of kills, 300 gold, but that is that early lead that you need for this composition of Fnatic to try to challenge them into the mid game and not let them scale has been going to hop into the poppy. That's going to happen a lot as this game comes along. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons you play Poppy into the Jax. You're basically just looking to neutralize. Neutralize the laning phase, limit his mobility in the team fights to hopefully let Noah carry. Noah is going to have to have such a monster game to be able to do the majority of the damage against a Jax and a Sejuani with the possibility of Orianna shields. Let's just think about the way these team fights are going to be late game. It's a lot of tanks to cut through, but Fnatic are off to a great start. Well, Fnatic are going to be able to secure this Drake, it looks like, here without any contest. Obviously, Elk and On are in the vicinity, but no one else. They're going to try to make a play topside in trade here instead. Shun has ult. Oscar Rinnan solo on mana here. So Bin has cookies that yeah. can get his mana back a little bit. Yeah, and they're going to push this wave. This is a pretty nice stacked wave. And Shun is level six. I mean, this is potential gank, but Oscar Rinnan is pretty tanky. Even with the Ruby Waiting Crystal, for here comes Yagao. And yeah, as you mentioned, they're just going to wait for the 3v1. We've seen this already today as down Ooh. should go the poppy in due time. Didn't take very long. Yeah. Kill going over to Bin as well. You know, you mentioned trying to mitigate this Jax. Don't let him get too far ahead. He's 15 CS ahead. Plate Gold's going to go over. And the poppy has just kind of been, I want to say, pushed back into turret. But he's been trading so well. He even used the honey fruit earlier. And now they're going to try to turn this into top side objective control as well. I do wonder if they can push them off this Rift Herald, because if they get it, BLG's going to be off to the races. But Razork's here, level 6. Humanoid has alt. They're trying to turn onto the Akali, but Humanoid is getting in there. He doesn't give a damn. He's got the Daisy, Daisy to help out with the triple knockup, but in goes on. The help with his own knockup and the follow-up of Trippy. He comes in and turns the tides of this tight fight, rather, as Yagao is going to go down. It's a double kill for Trippy on the Alistair. And finally, Oskurden does come in here, and he will try to help out with this one, but on and bin will just abandon ship. I mean, Rift Herald is denied here. You end up getting a, a nice kill on the back of that play as well, and I thought it was so well handled by Humanade. Uh -oh. Elk in trouble. Yeah, he's just going to throw an ult into Noah. Doesn't want any of that action. 
Yeah, looking at this fight, I feel like all the ultimates expended top lane gave Humanoid the confidence to be able to go in on that one, and delaying the Rift Herald is very important. Otherwise, Bin will be able to crash that turret. Let's watch this dive one more time. It was extremely clean. There's a flash, there's a lot of things that Oscar Rinnan would have been able to do in defense, but they locked the CC straight into the Rift Herald. He's actually gonna be back alive, but it's Humanoid who you need to watch in this fight. Yagao has no ultimate, Sejuani has no ultimate, Bin is low on mana, so they can't really retaliate that well, and the Ivern will make Humanoid a lot more effective, yeah. right? It gives him effectively a lot more health in this fight pops off in it. And in the early game, that those shields really add up. Daisy obviously really helping out significantly in this fight, and Humanoid's patience as well, dashing out, gets stunned out of the fight, they can come back in. He does end up getting taken out, but this is a huge win. Deny the Rift Herald, and of course, grab those two kills. This is huge. Now, you've got a kill on Noah, you've got a kill on this Akali, and these are accelerated champions for this composition. You were mentioning Valdez earlier that you really want to have if you're going to have any sort of chance at competing with this composition in mid game before we get to later parts of this where you were talking about Jack's side lane win conditions. Yeah, it's definitely going to come down to that if this game does go pretty long. But take a look at this. Fnatic going to get to work onto this Rift Herald, and it's, you know, 10 and a half minutes in. They should be able to take this down. As you do see, BLG on the bottom side of the map, Shin is getting in there trying to exert some pressure, but at the end of the day, it is just this free Rift Herald over to the side of Fnatic. Take a look at this, though. Elk and On with the support should be yeah. able to take down a bunch of these plates in the bottom lane. Yeah, pretty tough to defend that one. Also, not entirely sure what their plan is against this Jax. Yeah, they're trying to get in there. It looks like Counter-Strike is down, and Daisy's just getting to work down there. Meanwhile, we do have a fight up here as Humanoid. Oh. He's looking to exert some pressure down here as Elk. Just going to push him back once again as, meanwhile, up on the top side, Bin oh. is getting a game shot, and there it is! Oskirnin in the 2v1 takes down that kill, and no kill in the bottom lane is matched by BLG. And that's the plan with Poppy Ivern. Apparently, you can just walk up and dive the Jax at the turret. I don't think Bin necessarily knew that, but they get the kill. They had the Herald. They're actually going to save it for later because they have plenty of time. But it's all about keeping Bin down in this game, and Fnatic, hadn't been doing a great job of it, did right there. Well, this is a huge turning point, right? As Daisy is popped here, Razor coming over, and Bin uses his Counter-Strike here to clear the wave because ah. he needs to kill, kill the minions, but he's unsuccessful at getting all of those, and now he's just taking chip damage over and over and over again from Daisy. Flashes away here, is caught by the Root, and then, of course, the avoid here on the Counter-Strike allows Oscar Rinnan to then follow up and kill him. And down here, it's a really nice play from Humanoid because this looks like, okay, we're, we're making a play top side, we're going to lose out big on the bottom side, but he wins the mid lane control yeah. with that Pryo, comes down and says, that's the end of your plates. You guys are not getting any kills. You're not setting up any dive. They even get the TP, TP yeah, yeah, from Yagao. He's caught that wave in mid, but TP down, no big cross map here from BLG. Fnatic just playing the map better. Yeah, and I'm really curious how Yagao is going to be playing the Orianna in team fights because the way he's playing the map, he's almost playing it like Talia. If that makes sense, he's playing all through sides. They're not playing through mid very well. Trimby's taking a lot of damage. Yeah, he also smashed the ground. Not, not quite as effective as the Daisy. Humanoid on is going though. to take a lot of damage. Humanoid once again in that back line, just forcing him. Trimby is going to be forced to use his ultimate now, and he's being chased down the river. The rest of his team just leaving him to die as BLT will get the shutdown over to Elk by taking down the Alistair. And that's the worst, too the Alistair shutdown, <laughs> because he'd unfortunately gotten a couple last hits in the previous fight. That's a 450 gold donation over to Elk. Yeah, that's really rough, getting this Tristana further ahead. And, you know, Oscar Rinnan's gonna grab a turret plate up here top side and has this push. Should be able to get his way out of here. But this is, you know, picking up gold on a Poppy who's gonna be pretty self-sufficient anyways. You know, picking up a gold on a Jax, for example, a, t a top carry is gonna be way more important than just coming up here and grabbing a plate on Poppy. And by the time Bin gets here and Razork shows up, he's just gonna be able to clear the wave. No play to be made down here. So now Drake's evened up. It is Chemtech Soul here. So might not be seeing that much of a commitment from these two teams over that. Drake, that hasn't been too impactful this tournament. Yeah, if anything, I feel like this will be more likely to extend the duration of the game. Oscar Rinnan obviously getting a little bit more gold up there. Humanoid is taking a lot of damage. Gets ulted in the shroud. Wow. He's just going to go down 2v1. Elf picks up another big kill. What a nice play by BLG there. Humanoid thinking because he has the safety of the shroud and the turret that an AD carry and a jungler won't be able to threaten him. But they just basically 100 to 0 them 
and put Elk in a very strong position. Like, this has been a good early game for Fnatic Wolf, but the overall team fight structure of BLG's composition is still on pace. Yeah, it, it, it's it's very strong when you continue to get these kills over. And this is exactly what I wanted to take a look at. We saw the turret plates for a moment just before, but if you take a look at the lane economy snapshot presented by uh, snapshot presented by Mastercard here, it's 1,100 gold nearly here for Elk, the advantage. And this is a carry pick. Ivern has a ton of gold in that advantage here for Fnatic, but it's Ivern with Moonstone Renewer, right? These types of picks are impactful gold. Yeah. The Poppy getting topside plates, for example, with Rift Herald, not gonna really change the impact of these 5v5s. Ultimate here at basically point blank range for Shun means that he feels confident enough that even during Shroud, he can pull it off. Our observers toggled that right in that moment where you could see uh. he knew pretty much the angle. Very cool, and now we see the AD carries move into the mid lane. This Chemtech Rift is going to be pretty interesting when we do start fighting over those, as I think, you know, we're, we're probably going to be trading them off one for one. Also, who's going to get that second Rift Herald, which is spawning in a minute and a half? Uh, could be pretty good for getting some uh, pressure in the mid lane and trying to get ahead in this game. Yeah, Luden's completed for Yagao as well, so his Shockwave or even just his QW will start doing more and more damage. Really big upcoming team fight. If Fnatic can actually pull off the next team fight, let's say Humanoid gets significantly ahead of Yagao, then they'll be able to maneuver away from team fights because, like, I really do think either Noah has to be ridiculously far ahead to shred through a very strong front line of Bin and the Sejuani, or Humanoid needs to be so threatening in side lanes that he can easily kill Orianna and possibly stand toe to toe with Jax if he has the Ivern shadowing. Otherwise, the 5v5 team fights, I think, will be well in favor of BLG. There's one also extra card they have up their sleeve in terms of the Poppy Ultimate, but that's not something you can reliably use in true, each and every true. fight to, to warp it into a 5v3, for example, in your favor, especially if you consider how far away Jun can be in any of those moments, how Bin can flank. So you're not just going to guarantee knock the jungler away and win that 5v4 because they can play so far back before they engage. Still, at least a little bit of an emergency button here for Fnatic. One extra tool they have in their in their shed here. But I do agree that this next fight is going to be one they want to win very decisively here around this Rift Herald to start furthering the map, or opening up the map. On is going extremely deep. Now he is Rakan. And you'll see that Fnatic will respect that as they just run away from him. They say, well, you're probably too slippery for us two to do too much about it. But you can see that both teams really trying to get some pressure, trying to get some map control over this part of the map. As now Trimby is in the pit, and now he's out of the pit. <laughs> he's spotted. <laughs> and now he's on the run. It doesn't look like he he's really okay. wants a piece of that. He's, oh, he's going to be OK, luckily for him. Very tanky Alistair. Ben is uh, having his way with the bot lane minion wave. So he's just going to keep farming and farming. Fnatic is just, I'm just thinking about how these fights are going to play out. They're so low damage. Right, they're going to catch on once again. But, you know, again, it's this Rakan. They don't want to go into this choke against that and take a fight in that position. As Bin is making his way up. Skirnin in the bush. It looks like they finally do spot him. Is now on. Might not have a way out against the Poppy. Down he goes. He's just burst at 100 to 0. And now this fight coming in. Humanoid is pretty deep as the Poppy ultimate this time. You can rely on that one. But Humanoid, again, he doesn't really want to stay. Whoa. As now Skirn is going to go over the wall. And the follow up engage is huge as in goes soon alone. And this is a 4v5 for BLG. I don't think they want to take this fight as Fnatic is going on in. Bin, of course, in that back line. Oscar! Is pretty huge, but he is alone. And Oscar is just leading the charge on the bottom side of this fight. Divide and conquer. Fnatic just pick them apart piece by piece. Humanoid will fall. But it was beautiful to see how they punished on using the steadfast presence, locking him out. The Kaisa damage is enough. And then you have the follow up there. Poppy ult knocks Elk away. Damage is split. Yagao, he's Oriana. He doesn't have damage throughput to continue that fight. Elk, meanwhile, uh, look at this guy. I mean, he's he's not going to be able to hop away. I, uh, it's OK. He's got a Rakan nearby, and he's just going to put the step fast presence in. He wants oh. to skim plant, but he's not going to get it. As ticking away is Oscar. Oh. Oh, he gets the shield by hitting the plant, and Oscar will not fall this time. Oh, you love the Chemtech Rift. You just got to love it, Valdez. I know it's your oh, favorite. Oh, yeah. Love it. <laughs> Fnatic is having a moment right now. If they can continue to clutch up these team fights, we were talking about some of the ways they might be able to win. One of them was Noah or Humanoid need to get really fed. 3-0-0 now. 
really starting to tick up his power on the Kai'Sa. And honestly, Oscar being ahead of the curve right now, 2-1-2 two, and two on the Poppy, makes him incredibly hard to kill. He's the Giga Tank at the moment because they not only have him, they have the Ivern Shields, which work multiplicatively with resistances. So he really can't die in these fights unless BLG spend a substantial amount of time damaging him down. Been walking through here. There is one warrior to try to flank from, but it's not a great one. So he's just going to walk his way over here. That's going to be their main engage. Will he see this teleport flank? Definitely will. A very important ward to come down. Bit of damage into Humanoid, but it's just buying time for Fnatic to chip away at this Drake. As there you go, knocks away the jungler. And again, he is reliable. O Oscar will not be denied. As on a second huge damage, Humanoid is going super deep, but he has so much support from this Ivern. They're going to try to get a top of Elk, and they might ah. just be able to do it. They can't quite put that last bit of damage in, though, and Elk will be able to get away. As now Oscar on the front line, and the follow-up comes in from Trippy. Have they overextended? Is the question been? It's going to give them the answer as the shutdown comes in for soon. It looked so good. It looked so good in the fight, and the shields really stacking up on a humanoid made it feel like maybe they could carry their way through. But there is just too much here on the side of BLG, even with the low health bars. Once you're pushed out as the Akali, it's just so tough. Bin spots this flank, stuns off of the uh, the teleport here. Humanoid gets out, and then the follow-up here, knocking away the jungler, guaranteeing yeah. the smite is how this fight starts off. But then they all in onto the Rakan. And BLG team fighting is world class. You can see the way people just get away with slivers of health and never quite let you finish them. Look, on an elk, you think, hey, it's going to be a 3v5, let's keep going. But he's able to get the Orianna shield. He stays just on the outside of the team fight so that when Trimpy does go in, Elk is the one who's able to clean up. For a guy who seemed like he could be out of the fight, the turn at the end just catapults BLG ahead. And once Akali's mobility options are down, there's no way she can actually get back in and offer anything to the fight, even with the health lead that she has in that moment. So Humanoid just has to watch as his team kind of gets front to back by the turn and burn there coming from Elk. Doesn't matter how low you are as an AD carry if you've got the space to do the damage. Yeah. And this one coming in, we did have BLG as the favorites. They are currently favored by the win probability powered by AWS. But this game has really been on a knife's edge, and it, it still does feel like it could be anybody's game. I think we'll just have to wait and see how the future fights do go. You talked about the team fighting for BLG. Elk currently on top of the damage charts. And this is this is like Elk superpower, man, because On is almost never in lane. They gave up first blood. And oh yeah, by the way, he's done 5,000 more damage than literally everybody else in the game. He's just so good at team fighting, and BLG in general is so good at allowing him to be good. So Yagao in this game, Orianna, a power pick for everybody else, hasn't looked spectacular, but he's almost, to me, prioritizing his shielding, right? He's making sure that Elk is the one who's going to be able to carry, or Bin is the one who's going to be able to deliver the pain. Yeah, and that's one of the things about this Tristana pick. If you look at all 10 champions of the game, Tristana has the longest and most consistent damage output of any of these champions. Obviously, Akali can burst very quickly. So can Orianna. Kaisa has some sustained damage, but it's never going to be able to compete with a Tristana that is just constantly auto-attacking in these fights and getting resets and jumping forward. So if he lives long enough, if you can't actually kill him, these fights will always go BLG's way as long as they continue to protect him. So Fnatic's MO needs to be to pick him. Last time they got so close, they put on low, they put Elk low, but they need to finish that takedown. They yeah. need to eliminate him to win these fights. And I really feel like Fnatic's strength of this team composition is solely existent in the mid game. So they're really running out of time in where they can win these fights. This Baron being up now, like any type of fast play they could make where they can get Trinby to knock someone backwards or really just force fights around these objectives. Because if it gets too late, I feel like BLG will just take over. Might just end up being that way, but uh, for now it is pretty close, and you can see that Fnatic, I, I really love what actually the Ivern offers in terms of trying to clear out vision, you know, just put the daisy yeah. in front, you're just able to put up a bunch of brushes, and even in a very even game state, you're just like, okay, we're gonna take over this river. Now BLG immediately is gonna come in here and clear up this vision and take control of it, and you can already see that with two items here, the Black Lever as well picked up by Bin to deal with the Poppy in the side lane. This is going to become an issue the longer this game comes along. Yeah, and 
part of the stuff we've been talking about with Akali so much this turn about how she could shut Orianna down doesn't necessarily end up being that impactful if you're always kind of trying to babysit your Poppy because yeah. the Jax is winning the other side of the sign lane matchup. It allows Yagao to have so much more space to sit back and just avoid the Akali entirely. So that hasn't yet become a major issue for Yagao just yep. yet. This one is going to be pretty interesting. We do have the Chemtech Drake on the way, the second one of the game. And Fnatic coming in here, they already have one. They're ahead two to one on the Drakes. We'll see if they make a big play for this. We talked a lot about their mid game team fight potential. But again, it really will come down to the execution when we do get into these fights. And you can see BOG with just so much control over the river here. Humanoid does have teleport, but there's no good wards to get a flank off. It's going to be extremely difficult for Fnatic to actually fight this dragon. They're going to have to brute force their way through a choke point look if at, they want to stop this. Look at the ball placement. I mean, you just can't even walk up on Shun here because the, the Orianna is right with him. And if you get ulted in that choke, that's the end of the fight. And Elk has so much DPS, he can just simply take this out on his own. They hold the choke with the Orianna ball. Yeah. What do you do, Fnatic? You've got no option. Well, they're gonna just run through the Orianna and try to take this one down. The ult will miss as the huge engage comes okay. in from Trippy. It's the follow up. They're double oh. poppy knock up. As now they're gonna send it into the rest of BLG. As Elk, he's just gonna stay alive though. You can't even get on top of him with this. And Big comes in right at the end to totally turn the fight. Fanatic are routed and BLG will take this fight in a gigantic matter. I mean, they were going, they were able to force their way through the choke. They did close the gap, and Trippy's engage was pretty decent there. But on goes back through. Bin waits to the last moment. He engages there with a the counter strike. There are just too many threats, and even with the attempted smite steal there, or the attempt for Razor to get in there, the damage is just too high on Elk. And look at this. They retreat back, yeah. control the dragon. 60 health goes through. It's Elk who takes it. And once again, can you kill the Tristana? You're trying so hard. Elk has the shields. He goes kites back. You just cannot kill this guy and at this moment. It's done. It's over. On goes back in and Bin's oh. there for the follow-up. You're all locked in and Elk, full health. He's free firing. What a good team fight from BLG. Even though Oscar in an ejected two with the poppy off, even though Alistair had a four-man pulverize, it wasn't even close. It was completely dominated by BLG. It is what we've been talking about, though. The incredible synergies of their team composition, the low damage by Fnatic, how much their team composition needed to accelerate the game in the mid game. And even though it's 26 minutes, it feels pretty late and BLG has turned on. Absolutely, the Red Bull Baron power play here for the side of BLG. They not only take a gigantic fight, they take down the Baron, and that might just be the moment right before disaster that we have seen so many times as BLG, you give them a little edge. And already, it feels like this composition is online. They're just going to try to take the entire map. I mean, Tristana's interaction with turrets as well just allows you to rush them down so quickly. You saw that inner disappear, and now just carefully sieging that mid inhibitor turret while also threatening a flank on here, looking for Razork and Oscar Rinnan getting chipped away. They are actually not safe right now on that inner. They're going to have to link up with the rest of the team, but if they, the rest of the team links up, you lose your inhibitor. It's kind of a lose-lose situation here for Fnatic. I think the win probability now is telling the story. We're up at like 95%. Fnatic gonna have to really pull this one back if they wanna have any chances. A million brushes and Oskernan holds onto this turret. Yeah, I mean, if Fnatic tries to actually hold this outer turret, that could be the end of the game. There's still a long time left on this Baron power play. Minute and 30 seconds. Bin probably gonna pop back to base, grab an item and come right back if he wants to. Oh, he's just taking so much shelling from the Tristana. And the engages now from the side of Fnatic just look lackluster compared to the huge amount of damage that BLG has. I mean, Redemption's going to heal them back up. They're buying time here. They are weakening the, the Baron play because it's taking time away. They've already lost the mid inhibitor. They've conceded that point. But these bushes have bought a ton of time. Trimby looking for an engage. Going to come up empty, though. Get to the knockup, but there's just no follow-up damage. There's no sustained damage here. You only have burst with Kaisa Akali. So you need something else. And I think it might be too little too late. Yeah, BOG looks comfortable to just take their time. Bin just rolling down the bottom lane. BOG actually get that 4v5. No, it's trying to back in front of On. I think On was not happy with that one. Just throws an Ignite in to keep him around. But yeah, with 30 seconds left on the Rebel Baron power play, they're just trying to get as much value out of it as possible. I'm actually not sure if BOG fought a 4v5 if they'd lose. Like, even not having been there, just the structure of having the Sejuani Oriana Trist, 
is very powerful right now with how good Elk is playing and how much gold he has. I mean, Bin has a Zonius and a BF sword on top of his cleaver. <laughs> he is going to make Big quick bin. work of anyone that he encounters, but if he just PVEs, he's also happy to do that. It's very difficult to catch him. He can buy so much time as long as Yagao has teleport. It's never going to be a 3v1 on this Jax. He could just counter-strike. Zonia's back away, leap away, and then suddenly a Gao appears, suddenly the rest of the team appears. So not only is he Jax in the side lane, but he has so much support here and so much time. And as Fnatic, where are your options? I mean, you're so far behind you, yeah. you have no map control, there's no flanking wards for Humanoid, and you somehow have to front to back with Kaisa Akali. You're gonna need a big ult from Oscar Rinnan, and you need to kill Elk. That's the yeah. one thing you have to do. Oh boy. Well, everybody's being roped into this one. As Shin doesn't really seem to care, and now the rest of BLT will follow up on this. They knock away the Rakan. As a massive Whoa! shockwave comes in, and finally, Yagao gives himself a chance to shine. Here comes Ben. Here comes Ben. He's got that angle. Shin trying to extend this play, but Fnatic have backed up. But Oscar's going back in. And he nearly gets charmed up. He is just going to have to run away from this one. Gets the quickness out of on, I guess. Yeah, I will say Fnatic is pretty hard to kill. The tankiness of Oscar Rinnan, as well as the shielding from Razork, are making these fights pretty long. Also able to stuff a lot of that engage from Rakan at the tail end. But it is likely too little because there's no way they're making it through to this Chemtech Drake. You mentioned the Chemtech Soul probably extending the game. You know, it's two and two Drakes here. A lot of push in mid using that super minion wave here from BLG. Fnatic delay, they buy some time in the base, but they're never gonna get Pryo. Now the Drake goes over, Bin goes back to his natural habitat here down in the bottom side of the map, and this bot lane pushes waves through. We're gonna have a bit of a lull after this, but you can see, no matter what Fnatic try to do, Elk is always so far away from yeah. the action, and then he just goes straight forward into Trippy. Yeah, it takes a long time to kill him. It's really difficult to get through these tanks, but he is just free firing. And with the front line, Shun's gonna provide here. And Yagao has Shockwave, he has the shields. The ball carrier is in the front line. What do you do here as Fnatic? Because your options limit, you could buy time, but that's it. And if you buy enough time for the inhibitor, maybe you get one more team fight. Maybe that Oscar Rinnanolt is what changes this game. Yeah. But I, you know, it doesn't get easier from here. Gotta land the perfect poppy ult somehow, or help Elk just make some monstrous mistake. Even though they have two GAs completed now. On knows. I mean, there's one spot they're gonna be. There's just way too much vision on the map right now for BLG. So he's like, well, either you're in this push, or I'm just gonna get a ward down for free. And he will eventually get his team on over just to extend vision before this Baron respawns in 30 seconds. I can see BLG just biding their time. I'd say good discipline by them this game. It didn't go well early. They didn't force any massive team fights when Fnatic was at their strongest. Even when they had that first Baron, there would be a version where they try to play super aggressive, dive in her turrets, but the disaster there would be Oscar Rinnan gets a big poppy ult, maybe they give away a few bounties. So they're playing very conservatively, they know they have the better scaling, and they know they have this game if they just play it right. Vaughn just keeps baiting these. Yeah, he is very well, and Trippy, I think, is gonna go down. Down he does go, no hope, even through the Altus now. The TP comes in, is this the flank you were looking for, Fnatic? I'm not so sure, as he will dodge oh, that one, and Finn is going 1v3 in the back line, even against the Oscar, uh, against the Poppy, as Oscar Ow. eventually goes down, and nobody can kill Finn in this game anymore. He's got GA, he's got his own, he's got so much armor stacked up on top of the the fact that he's Jax, so he wasn't even gonna pop his GA, and that may just be the beginning of the end in this one. That's how it ends. It's not a Baron, it's not a Drake, it's just a fight in the jungle. They're gonna take a lot of this turn. Wow! Oh well, that's what you could not afford at this point, although it looks pretty over. Down goes the Kaisa Noah, not able to help out his team at the very last moment, and Bin and the rest of them, the boys on BLG, will be able to take down this Nexus and play with their food in the fountain just a little bit more. There you go, BLG will move on to two and one. And the Ivern pick, ultimately in the beginning of the game, made such a huge impact. There was the yeah. gank top side, there was the earlier gank bottom side, and Razor really put BLG on the back foot early with this pick, especially also with that mid play where he was able to get the flash, was able to get the shield off there. 
two flashes down. They had so much momentum, but what its function was in late game wasn't that impactful. And it was never, there was never an opportunity once BLG took control to get towards Elk and on. He literally just kept walking up to the front, like, engage on me, I'm Rakan. There's definitely not four members behind me who are about to collapse in. <laughs> but as Fnatic, Surely. I mean, as Fnatic, you have to try to catch somebody. Your comp is yeah, kind of relegated with a Kali Kaisa.